Hey, what's up athletes? Welcome back to The Prime. My name is Phil Farrow and today we're going to talk about why you should never use a shooting gun ever again. James catches, puts up a three. So before we talk about the shooting gun, the first thing we're going to want to do is talk about how we should be training our jump shots. Here's the one thing I want you to know about shooting workouts. They start before you even get into the gym, which leads me right to step one. Step one is have a written plan. You're going to want to get your notebook and a pen, write down exactly what kind of shots up you're going to get, which will increase the likelihood that you finish the workout and allow you to maximize your time in the gym so you're not wasting time. Which leads me right to step two, which is track your results while you're shooting. Now I know what you're thinking, Phil, the shooting gun tracks my results for me. I'm gonna get back to that later. Now, as you're writing in your notebook and you're tracking your results, you're gonna wanna shoot in sets of 50. So you're gonna have five different locations on the court, which would be right corner, right wing, center, left wing, and left corner. Each location you're gonna have 10 attempts at. Now, once you write this out and you have your set of 50, you're gonna to want to write out a few goals and consequences for yourself. So for example, let's say we're getting up 50 mid-range shots. And I have a goal for myself to make eight out of 10 at every location. And I write down my consequences are three push-ups for every one miss off of eight. So for example, let's say I start off the left corner six for 10. That means I'm gonna do six push-ups before I go to my next location. I hope this helps. Step three is going to be <clears throat> getting shots up at game speed. So let's see the basketball. Thanks, Brandon. <laughs> and <clears throat> I'm gonna break down really quick um, how you should be getting shots up at game speed. This is probably the most important of the three things that you could be doing while you're doing your shooting workout. Making sure you're getting shots up at game speed. So, first thing you're gonna wanna do is be low and ready. As you get to higher levels of play, you're gonna have less time to get jump shots off and this is gonna help you train your release to get a little bit quicker. So step one, low and ready. As you're tossing it to yourself, step two is gonna be catch and step. So you're gonna to wanna to catch the basketball and step at the same time. It's gonna look like this. Now, step three is just gonna be hold your follow through. Once you're low and ready, catch and step, you just shoot the basketball and hold your follow through. This is gonna uh, help your body to gain a little bit more muscle memory as you're getting shots up. Your brain's gonna start remembering what it feels like to make a jump shot, which is just gonna increase your shooting percentage uh, throughout the season. Let's take a look at what the best shooter in the game does in his training. One thing I want you to recognize is he's low and ready on the catch. He catches and steps at the same exact time and he's following through on his jump shot. So now that we've covered how we should be training our jump shots, now we can talk a little bit about why this is more beneficial than shooting on a gun. So first thing I wanna talk about is the goals and consequences that we are setting for ourselves. If you're breaking your shots down into sets of 50, you're being a little bit more meticulous and precise about your training. The goals and consequences serve a purpose for mental pressure. So if you have a goal for eight out of 10 for one spot and you have a consequence that's going to increase every miss off of your goal, this is gonna put a little bit of extra pressure on every shot that you shoot. As opposed to, if you go in and get on a shooting gun and say, you know what, today I'm about to get 300 shots in on the gun. Shot 213 isn't gonna matter very much. You're not gonna have the same mental pressure that you're putting on yourself if you're not using a shooting gun.
The last couple points I want to make about why this is a little bit more beneficial than shooting on a shooting gun has to do with conditioning. The thing that all players love to do the most. Um, now in the summer, if you're getting shots up by yourself, a shooting gun is really convenient because it catches the basketballs and it you know, passes them right back out to you. But if you're a little bit more of a high level player, you're gonna wanna get two things in at once. You wanna get shots up and a little bit of conditioning in. So rebounding for yourself is the perfect time to do that. Steve Nash was notorious for doing this for himself because he wanted to work on his conditioning while he was getting shots up. The second point, we can talk a little bit about in-season shooting. Now, preferably, you're gonna wanna ask a teammate to come with you over just using a shooting gun by yourself. And here's why. It's the perfect time to work on your passing accuracy. All of the best shooting teams in the world know that passing accuracy leads to shooting accuracy. So as you get different teammates to come into the gym with you, your rebound for them and you're passing it back out to them, you can start to figure out where their shooting pocket is, which is gonna lead to more buckets in training and in the games. I hope this served. Until next time.